For many of us, a year like the one we're having can put a damper on our moods and cause us to feel low. Whether it's the pandemic, inequality, politics, economic hardship, illness or grief, or a bad situation at work, the external environment takes a real toll on how we feel, including how we feel about ourselves. Our own feelings of insecurity and our own internal self-doubt can have the same or even a multiplier effect. And this feels bad. So although we cannot immediately remove all of the forces that stand in the way, we can make a deliberate decision to take control of what we can change, and we can start now. Decision neuroscience is a relatively new field, only a few decades old, and it's driven a lot by consumer economics, so an attempt to understand and model consumer behavior. Now science has advanced to the point where we can model these basic decision-making processes, from whole brain scans like functional MRI, all the way to recording single cells and understanding which genes are activated during decision-making. We know a lot about how we make decisions, and we know a lot about the biological processes happening in our brains when we do. Our brains, super simple science lesson. Like the rest of our bodies, our brains are composed of cells called neurons, which make connections onto each other called synapses. And these synaptic connections form beautiful, unique patterns in our brains, which make us who we are. Some of these we are born with, and some of these are created from our experiences. Those are the ones we will think about today. Our experiences help us create the blueprints that become our brains and encode our traits. Billions of brain cells form circuits that are reinforced with use, and those that are used the most grow strong and persist, and those connections that are not used are gradually pruned away. Repeated use of those circuits makes them ever more efficient and allows them to connect to other parts of the brain. Now, the dogma used to be that we are born with all the neurons we will ever have and that they're irreplaceable, but we now know this is not true. We do grow new neurons, a process called neurogenesis, all the time, and we continue to make synaptic changes throughout our lives. This is called plasticity. Now, decision-making is a multi-step process that involves many parts of the brain. There are instinctual decisions that we don't put much conscious effort into, or any conscious effort. We drink when we're thirsty. We all scratch and itch. We look towards the direction of a loud sound. These decisions are critical to our survival as a species. But we engage more of our brains when we're making really complex decisions, like whether or not to take a new job. When you're making positive, self-affirming choices, you can activate your brain's reward centers through circuits involved in motivation and pleasure. These are the brain's value areas. Using brain imaging, we know that these parts of the brain are activated when we think about rewards and the things that bring us pleasure. We would see different areas activated in response to something undesirable. So, is it really so simple as that? We know now, some new things about the brain that we maybe didn't know before. We know how we make decisions. We know some strategies we can use to make us feel good. We know why this works, and we know how the brain is involved. But of course, it is not so straightforward. We're complicated. Psychiatry will talk about the rational brain and the emotional brain and how they're in conflict with each other or support each other. It's really that sweet spot between logic and emotion that leads to good decisions. And we can largely control both of those things, but not so well all of the time. We know from scientific research that emotion plays a really critical role in our decision-making process. Patients with damage due to either disease or injury in the emotional centers of the brain have a very hard time making decisions. Emotion is critical because when we're faced with a decision, like do I or don't I ask for that promotion, we rely on a lot of factors that are linked to how we feel, including our memories and our values and our prior experiences. We don't want to repeat things that made us feel bad, and we do want to make positive choices that will make us feel good. Under normal circumstances, we can make wise decisions about risk. 
but under stress, when our cortisol levels are high, this is our stress hormone, we may find that we become more focused on the reward and we take even more risks, even if the cost is high and the chance of success is low. We may alternatively become more conservative, looking for smaller and surer successes. Under stress, some of us need to talk to a friend, we need to bond, we need a hug, and others of us want to completely disengage in isolation. We should be aware of who we are when we are stressed and be mindful of how this impacts our behavior and our feelings about ourselves. Let's talk about socialization. We're all also socialized differently and we perceive the world differently. You may be the sort of person who likes to avoid negativity. You may come from a household or a culture where you are rewarded for being proactive and decisive. Or you may be encouraged to be more submissive and receptive to other people's views. Some of us tend to care more about being liked than others. Our self-esteem may be built around the quality of our relationships. Maybe we want to please everyone and we feel bad about ourselves when we don't. It's important to understand how we react to stress and how the ways we were brought up influence our behavior so that we can be self-aware about why we may be feeling a certain way. So if leadership is the capacity to influence the thoughts and emotions and behaviors of others, then we have to start with our own. The brain teaches us that when we are primed to be aware of the underlying reasons why we are feeling self-critical, we may be more likely to control that and to adjust our thinking. There is a whole science behind self-awareness and it involves even other parts of the brain. Self-awareness is a very complex neurological process, but it's basically the ability to think about our thoughts. It's a very human characteristic. It all comes down to the power of positive thinking, shutting down that negative inner voice, of being deliberate about it and doing it over and over again through repetition and practice. It becomes part of who we are and it's linked to our health and well-being. Feeling good forms a buffer to stress and depression, and it fosters good physical and mental health.